Hello there and welcome back to episode 2 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In the last episode we have set up sort of a little starter base and today we are going to dig out the workshops, set up the zones for that and get our business a little bit going. Also I'm going to set up the farming area and set up a irrigation slash the foundation of that. I don't know how far we'll get in this episode. So as usual, this is a Let's Play game series, so that means this is also a tutorial series and a Let's Play series, so that means there will be always things happening in between. So let's unpause the game and, well, right now we're still churning out these sections. And in the last episode, we also managed to hit here another aquifer layer. The sad thing here is that this aquifer layer is exactly where I wanted to set up my smithy. So we have to redo our our ideas here a little bit. So also here we see we have another nope on our plans because there's aquiferous rock where I wanted to set up my farms. So let's scroll back upstairs and check out if there's any body of water here. No, there's not. Sometimes if there's a body of water up above there, sometimes that really shows deeper downstairs. So there's a good chance that generally this direction here will be aquiferous as long as our environment is siltstone. These aquifer layers, they often um, penetrate the entire stone layer. So this type of siltstone, the siltstone here is the stone layer in that regard. Okay, so that means our plan has been foiled and we need to redo that. So we are going to go down here and I'm digging out a irrigation chamber next. So this chamber is seven on seven grids. So seven in this uh, dimension and seven in that dimension. We are going to leave out the center one because that's uh, pretty important. I really hope that it will work out here. So, well, I mean, it, it, it's not the end of the world. We can work with what we got here. Often aquiferous stone is just something to work around. So we're going to set up some workshop base here to get our production downstairs, ultimately. So yet again, I'm going to set up a higher priority on my jobs because I have noticed that if you don't, hauling is always more important than mining. And while I really agree that hauling is extremely important, I disagree that mining is less important. So this is a nice way of convincing your dwarves to haul and mine. So down here, we're setting up our, our uh, other storage halls. What's uh, irritating me here so far is we haven't found any gemstone or any valuables in that siltstone here. So it seems as if this layer is just stone, stone, and stone. So these things, they sometimes happen, you know. Alrighty, so this is going to be our food district. This is going to be our stone district. So let's set up shop here and create some bays to get our crafts going. So I'm going to start with a very basic layout and we're going to expand our stonemasons workshop along with the time. I'm not going to go for a super mega hyper efficient layout because I personally think if you overdo it, the fun is bleeding out. But the systems that I'm introducing here, you can totally adapt them to your own liking. So here we're setting up the main storage zone for stone. So I'm creating a new stockpile zone here and this one will be for normal stones like I don't want any um, metal stones or any uh, well we can't have these economic stones because we we don't know what we're going to find but I'm going to leave the metal ores out of the equation here because I don't want to have them there and we're going to set down now workshop wise the stone workers of course and it's about time that we get them going as well because we need stone blocks and now I'm going to set up my first little extra area here like that and another one of these down here 
Okay. It'll all make sense in a second. I'm setting up the stone workers area as soon as possible because I find it one of the most important areas to have. Okay, this is looking good. It seems as if we have a, uh, a success here at our hands. Good, good. So let's move already a couple of those workshops downstairs as soon as we have access to the block making. Also, I'm going to set up a mechanics workshop down here. I'm going to use siltstone, that's okay. It's a little bit inefficient to use an entire boulder for that because you could only use a quarter of the material, but given how much siltstone we have around us, I don't think we need to be stingy here about that. So, the mechanics workshop will get linked to another stockpile zone where we're going to store mechanisms. Mechanisms are the key component for everything. Traps and everything, levers and, well, mechanics, basically. Super easy to craft out of stone and super cool to have that. So this stockpile, to configure it to store mechanisms, you go like this, customize, then you go furniture, because oddly enough, mechanisms are furniture. So the easiest way to get this stockpile to store it that I found is first I go and mark all and now we accept every type of material every quality just what we want and now in the type area I go for none and now I just select what I want to have mechanisms and just like that with just two clicks I have convinced that stockpile to do my bidding it's pretty simple it's a little bit generalistic but you can do a lot of things with that little trick there so next thing we're going to do we're going to make us a convenient amount of rock blocks because we really really do need these in my humble opinion next thing is let's let's do a let, let's think for a moment so that was stone that was wood that was crafts that was smithing so i'm going to put wood and smithing together so this is going to be wood let's put up some bays here as well because these workshops they really are important but i want to do a few things especially before we go deeper in the craft into the crafts uh, into the workshop area there's a reasoning behind that so let's whip up a another or uh, another storage zone here i want to store everything rock blocks so all the blocks that we make out of stone will get stored here so we have a, an area to store that stuff at and let's assign that job twice good also i want to have a hatch cover apart from that i want to have a door so these guys are busy now good we have mechanisms and we have these things let's get back upstairs and let's see well they made the blocks let's mark that hatch cover as the most important thing so the next thing that i want to do is i want to create an irrigation so farming wise i want to introduce you why irrigation is so good there was a question in the last episode that's uh, why we're going to go here a little bit into detail so farm plots as you see here i can paste them down here and if i go down here neat soil or mudded lab location so we're going to build a tiny farm uh, farm spot let's say in here for the sake of demonstration and now we're going to continue with the irrigation and then we're going to compare one thing with another. So we know that the layer above us is aquiferous. So we're going to make use of that. You can make every rock ground compatible with farming by sprinkling some water over it. And then you can put your farming, your farm plots on top of it and cash in huge yields. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the data later, but for now we're going to set it up. But to get water, we're going to use the the uh, the aquiferous nature of the stone. So step one, we're going to use the ramp command. With this command, we're going to go here to that thing here, and we're going to dig out um, upwards so we can get ourselves there. So now you see, we have that ramp, 
This is by the way um, marked like that. If you if you don't push that button, it looks like that. Please push that button. It's so much more useful. And now you see we have that thing here going on, and it's all whetstone. So now I want to mine that out, and just as usual, it doesn't get marked in. Let's see. Yeah, this is a little bit of an odd thing. So. <laughs> As you see, they, they somehow can't stand on the ramp and mine up there. So to relieve yourself of that problem, next step, we go into the constructions and we construct the stairs here with the siltstone blocks we're making. And once that stairs ha have been made, we're good. Then we can dig out the area up there. And then we're going to use the hatch cover that we made, but one thing at a time. So let's see, here the rock blocks have been, are being made, the hatch cover is being made, the mechanisms are there, wonderful. The only thing that's not there is somebody constructing that staircase. So let's see what went wrong there. All right, we redo that because the uh, construction job was uh, constantly inactive. That can mean that there's just nobody there, or sometimes that means that you derped something. See, it immediately disappeared. Something was wrong there, so there we go. Boom. We have now one staircase there, and the next staircase will be made in a second. There we go. And now the stuff is being dug out. And as you see here, we get a warning for a wet environment. Of course we do. And now we have prepared a room that will now fill with water. That's just what we need. But to make it all usable when we want it, we are going to put a hatch now on top of that staircase so it doesn't leak downstairs constantly. And next step, we put a lever right next to that thing. Maybe we make that, that corridor a little bit wider. And now we have that hatch there which will keep the water in check. Now we take that lever, link it to the uh, thingy there, but obviously we don't have mechanisms right now. Let's see, link the lever to the hatch door. So that's that. Now we're just waiting until this chamber is fully filled with water. And once that's the case, we're going to flick the switch and flood the room and then we're going to have one room fully full with mud. So the ratio here, these are exactly 10 squares and these are 49 squares. So you see, 10 squares are enough for around 50 squares. So that equation one to five is roughly what you can, what you need for an irrigation. I'm putting a door here in between because I don't want the entire base to get flooded. So, good stuff. We have a nice beginning here. Now we have to wait, though, for that to be finished, because, you know, before there's water in here in sufficient amounts, we cannot do anything. The only thing we can do is we can axe that um, staircase here, because we won't need it now anymore. So, we can't do that with this. And then this staircase will get destroyed. Okay, good stuff. So for now, I'm going to leave the kitchen or the uh, farming zone as it is, because up here we have a an ore starter base. We have pretty much everything we require. So I just wanted to show you here the difference. So here, everything in the topsoil layers, you have that marker poor soil. Whenever there's this marker poor soil, your returns are 75 to 66 percent lower. And without that marker, you get the, you get more out of your plants. This is important in so far as in poor soil, usually you put one seed in, you get one seed out. A very good planter puts one seed in and gets two seeds out or, or three if you get a really, really good roll. And lower downstairs, you can multiply your seeds way, way easier. And it's much easier to get a higher, uh, a, a higher crop yield as well. So just so you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing here. So we got a nice start for ourselves here. Let's get going for the other things. So you see some blocks have been made 
and the mechanisms you might have already guessed it what they've been what they uh what they were good for so now i want to put my carpenter's workshop here the siltstone blocks will come in handy and this will be the general wood storage zone here we're going to go and make it ourselves easy and just uh, designate the general wood uh, storage zone and here we're going to go whoopsie that's the wrong direction well whatever i wanted that one actually so my plan is to make a stockpile zone for furniture and since it's a fun thing to do that oh that's the sound of immigrants uh, showing up that's nice so we're going to go like that. All right. So I'm connecting these. This is my typical setup because here we will store fur furniture, here we will store furniture because the carpenters make furniture and the stone workers make a lot of furniture. And this way they have a stockpile that they can easily access via a staircase. So it's pretty easy to for those guys to get their jobs done. Okay, so as you see here, our population has increased to 16. So we'll have to put up some living areas uh, at some... At our next convenient uh, moment, you know. Okay, so stone workers woodworkers and we're going to put now the smithing area down here i said so that means this will get a nice and large hall as well and down here we need the the crafts and the jewelers already so let's make that like that and as you see here, I'm constantly building these bays, and you might already wonder why the hell am I building these. So the thing is, dwarves sometimes like to create artifacts, and then they get into a strange mood. When you sometimes you get unlucky and you're not able to fulfill their uh, the the recipe the ingredients that are necessary for a bat and whenever a dwarf is unable to get, fulfill his strange mood to create an artifact he's going to die one way or another he's either growing uh, sad and refuses to drink and eat or he go he goes berserk and uh, tries to murder as many people as he can before he dies whatever might be the case if, so, if you notice that you're not fulfilling the strange mood, you know, when you have these bays, all you need to do is a wall here, a wall there, and then you can wait until the person is expiring, and uh, if they're berserking, they're not going to harm any of your dudes, and that's, that's the general thought behind these bays, if you're wondering why I built the workshops like I do. Okay. So let's move on and create those furniture stockpiles. Here I also make it easy for myself and create them by just clicking the furniture category here. Boom, just like that. Done. So it's now time to delete the stockpile zone up here because I don't want the items that are stored in here I don't want that anything new is being added to this pile. So we're going to do this like that. And everything I'm creating stockpile zones down here now will ultimately get sorted down there. So let's continue with adding some stockpile zones for my kitchen district. So I'm feeling a little bit cramped here. So we're going to expand in that direction here and make those uh, and forget those bays. Thing is, the kitchen area doesn't need the base because you don't create artifacts in the kitchen. It's just like that. Strange moods don't uh, usually don't befall um, the kitchen workshops, so we should be good in that regard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so we got these things going. We got those things going. 
let's go and designate the next stockpile here for ores, because that's going to be a smithy area. Stone metal ores. There we go. And down here in the crafts district, we're going to go and designate here. Well, first we create ourselves some craftsman workshops. And as you might notice, we're starting to have a, uh, a nice infrastructure for everything we might want to require, we might want to use here. So this stockpile here will store everything called finished products, because usually the um, Crafts Dwarf workshops churn out these. Okay, time for some general work orders that are just important. So to store stuff, we're going to use wooden bins because, you know, bins are just where you can compactify your, your inventory a lot. So we're going to set up to have always less, uh, always at least five and make at least three of these because, you know, those uh, rock blocks, for example, will get stored in bins quite nicely. The next thing we're going to make is rock mugs at the Crafts Dwarf workshop because ore dwarfs need some containers that they can drink out of. We're going to make at least six of these and then we are going to start and prepare furniture for our bedrooms. That's going to be rock door and we already, we don't have beds yet, so we're going to make beds. And we're also going to take a step in advance and make, uh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> we're going to make rock tables and rock thrones. There we go. So we're going to have also the uh, interior for a dining hall. Now, Rock doors, I want to specify that we're going to use siltstone for these. That's just a cosmetic thing that I personally prefer. So we want to have at least 10 doors at all times. I, per I like that. And same rule applies for those beds, for those tables, and for the thrones. So I don't know what kind of color I want to have for these. So I'm going to just stick with the siltstone doors. Okay. Good. Nice start so far. We have now set up a basic routine for everything. Let's see how the irrigational chamber, almost done. Wonderful. So this door will be now forbidden so that nobody accidentally would get, will get his feet wet. And let's start and set up the farming workshop thingies. Oh yeah, I know what I forgot. I knew I forgot something. So let's make a rock block work order. So we're going to just define that, of course, to make just siltstone blocks. And I'm going to tell the game that I want to have 50 of these at all times. You know, we want to have these for our building purposes. Okay, now, well, that's all good, that's all fine, exactly. Here, I'm going to set up a jeweler. Right now, we don't have any jewels, but you know, we will have some jewels later down the road, and I'm going to set up a stockpile for those gems. Nice. So, I think we are now at a okay spot. Let's wait until this chamber is fully done. But we're now going to breach that aquifer in the meantime. Yeah, we have enough time for that. So I'm breaching the aquifer now next because I really want to make sure that we're going to have an area to build our city in as soon as possible. So we've struck a different stone layer, conglomerate, and there's immediately some gemstone around us. Tragically, we will not unearth these because we want to breach that aquifer layer ASAP. So as you see here, next layer of damp stone located. As soon as we have smoothened out these walls, there will be no more water gushing out of these. So we're going to do that while we're drilling deeper. 
With 16 dwarves at our hand, we are fairly fast in our business. So, goes on like that. Always refresh the, the uh, mining jobs, because they get deleted whenever damp stone is located. The mining job gets deleted and you need to reapply it. It's quite a pain, but something you get to, to you you have to work on through, you know. It's just as it is. Okay, well, let's hope that we're going to get through the aquifer so rather sooner than later. And that is going to be where I'm going to start and build the actual city layer because you know we we will need apartments we will need temples we will need guild halls all the fancy things that make the life worthwhile you know so turns out that shaft goes really down down deep but well we're gonna get there can't be too much so with those light aquifers you gotta be uh, you gotta be patient but this looks good i think we're already this was the last one so here we've struck pinkish uh, rock rock salt and uh, we're going to smooth out these just for the cosmetics it ain't necessary though as you see here this was the last layer so we finally have reached the end of that aquifer slayer wonderful so that will be the foundation for our actual city that is a really really massive step forward my friends so let's make sure that we got the right format you know i it is not necessary but i personally like to do that so we're going to leave this section as it is because i want to do the irrigation as the last thing for today all right rooms are almost full with water i think it should be enough let's flick the switch i hope this was not uh, i was not too impatient i'll three flick the switch and as you see here this was exactly enough that every every little spatch here on the ground has seen some water and from that point on you can build farm plots on that the water will evaporate the warmer your biome the faster it'll do and then you can now set up farm plots on top of that which are actually much more powerful than those above the ground i just want to showcase it here last time there you see there's no poor soil designator that's done okay so we're going to set up some stockpile zones before i go and um, outro for today's episode. So we're going to set up the farming plots like that. This is my personal favorite uh, layout. So it's four zones with four on three where we got a nice diversity. So I'm just going to set up here pigtails for fabric production. You cannot start too soon with fabric production in my humble opinion. Plump helmets, of course, for food and drink. Sweet pots for a little bit of booze diversity. You can also make sugar out of these. And the last one I'll leave uh, fallow for now because I don't really need these things that desperately. So we're going to set up one stockpile in front of here for the seeds. So food and seeds, boom. This makes it so that every type of seed will be stored here, so our farmer has a relatively short walking um, routine when he's doing his everyday jobs. So, the next thing is we're going to set up our workshops downstairs here, but I'm going to go and uh, leave it with just the, the workshops. We're going to do the the more detailed setup on the, of that in the next episode. So we're going to set up a still, we're going to set up a kitchen. So this is now the full farmer's uh, district setup. We have the fishery here as a necessity in this environment. We're going to set up a butcher and a tanner. Never go without these was that now? Butcher at the Tanner. Forgot which one I started with. And 
really important, the farmer's workshop. That's what, where you shear your animals and milk your cows and process uh, plant stuff at. And I think... I think we got it there. Butcher Tanner, Fishery Kitchen Farmer. Yeah, yeah. For now, that's going to be what we're going to be working with. So let's do the stockpiles for that and then I'm going to say goodbye for today. So we're going to set up one big stockpile for drink. That's going to be found here in the drink plant section. We're going to set up one stockpile zone for prepared food for the kitchen. It's found here, prepared meals. We're going to set up one ingredient zone. That's going to be here in the food section, all the meat, all the plants, all the fish, and everything that will show up later, but this is a nice uh, basis to start with. We can also put fruits and leaves here for now, maybe also fat. Okay, that will work for starters. So this is roughly what we're going to work with for now. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today, my good friends. I hope you found that helpful so far. Thanks for your uh, very, very awesome and friendly comments on the previous uh, episodes. It's really a joy to uh, make this series if you guys are so positive and all. And it's, it's, it's really fun to do that. So leave me your comments, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a subscription on the channel if you want to support it. There is also lots of playlist links in the description box leading to this series, a beginner's tutorial series. If this is just uh, overwhelming for you, I have a much more simplified version of the series. And as usual, I hope you have a wonderful day and hope you will tune in for the next episode as well. See you there. Bye bye.